Okay, time for the chain rule, the moment you've been waiting for, hopefully. So from Calc 1, we know how to use the chain rule, right? If we have a function, capital F of X, that's really a composition of two functions, so F of F and G. Um, it's derivative df dx is f prime of g times g prime. Now, we can also write this if, if you think about y being f of x and x being g of t, then dy dt is dy dx times dx dt. So that's calc 1. Now, let's talk about calc 2. So chain rule for one independent variable. Suppose z is equal to f of x, y, and let's suppose x equals g of t and y equals h of t, and they're all differentiable functions. Then z is going to be a differential function, differentiable function of t. So z or f of x, y is gonna be a differentiable function of t and dz dt is going to be the partial of z with respect to x times dx dt plus the partial of z with respect to y times dy dt. Now the text, textbook gives a proof of the formula, so I'm not, I'm not going to actually do this one, but hopefully you can see that it does make sense. So basically what we're doing is differentiating f with respect to each variable and multiplying each of these by the derivative of that variable with respect to t. And the final answer, we just add them up. So let's compute dz dt for, the, for this function. It's always good to do an example. Um, I'm having some technical difficulties right now. Apologies. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. So let's do it. All right, I'll do each component separately. So what is dz dx? That's just d dx of x e to the x y. And that's a, a chain a chain rule product rule. Remember that when we're doing this, y is a constant. So I'm gonna get e to the xy plus xy e to the xy. And dz dy is gonna be uh, d dy of x e to the xy. So x here is a constant and I'm gonna get just x squared e to the xy. Uh, dx dt now is 2t and dy dt is negative t to the minus two. All right, so um, next thing we have to do is we need to substitute x equals t squared and y equals t to the minus one into our partials dz dx and dz dy. So dz dx becomes e to the t squared times t to the minus one plus t squared times t to the minus one e to the t squared times t to the minus one, which is going to give me e to the t plus t e to the t. And dz dy is going to give me um, t squared squared e to the t squared times t to the minus one or t to the fourth e to the t. So finally, dz dt is gonna be the partial with respect to x times dx dt plus the partial with respect to y times dy dt, which is, um, it sure is, what is that going to give me? Um, that is going to give me, this is not rocket science. Um, at this point, uh, so we have this plus t to the fourth e to the t times negative t to the minus two. All right, um, so I'm going to get two t e to the t 
plus 2t squared e to the t minus t squared e to the t or 2t e to the t plus t squared e to the t. So that's the case if we have one independent variable, right? So you might almost think of this parametrically, maybe. All right, um, but what about now if we have two independent variables? So let's suppose z is f of x, y, and x is a function of two variables, u and v, and so is y. And all of our functions are differentiable, then z is a differentiable function of u and v, and dz du is going to be dz dx, the partial of z with respect to x times the partial of x with respect to u, plus the partial of z with respect to y times the partial of y with respect to u, and dz dv, same idea. Partial of z with respect to x times the partial of x with respect to v, plus the partial of z with respect to y times the partial of y with respect to v. And that's the idea. So let's, uh, let's do an example. Let's find um, dz du and dz dv partials where z is e to the 2r sine theta, r is uv minus v squared, and theta is the square root of the quantity u squared plus v squared. All right, let's apply the chain rule for each one of those variables. So um, let's try using our subscripts, right? So z u is, that's dz du, right, by definition. And so that is going to be dz dr times dr du plus dz d theta times d theta du. Alrighty, what is dz dr? Well, partial of z with respect to r is going to be 2 e to the 2r sine 3 theta times uh, what's the partial of r with respect to u is just going to be u. You know, um, partial of z with respect to theta. So we're focusing in on the sine three theta. So that's going to give me three e to the two r cosine of three theta. Uh, multiplied by d theta du, which is going to be u over the square root of u squared plus v squared. <clears throat> And then let's plug in all of our U's and V's and we're gonna get something super unpleasant. So that is going to give me um, two, uh, let's see, two U times E to the two R, which is U V minus V squared sine of three times theta, which is square root of u squared plus v squared, plus um, three u e to the two uh, times two uv minus v squared times cosine of three square root of u squared plus v squared, all divided by square root of u squared plus v squared. Yeah, that's right. Sheesh, that was fun. And uh, the partial of z with respect to v, I'm gonna get dz dr times the partial of r with respect to v plus the partial of z with respect to theta times partial of theta with respect to v. Okay, um, well, dz dr we already calculated, so just copy it down here. Um, partial of r with respect to v is going to be u minus 2v plus dz d theta. Again, we've already calculated that times uh, d theta dv. So that's going to be v over the square root of u squared plus v squared. And then we're going to plug in our variables. So I'm going to get 2 
times u minus 2v e to the 2 times uv minus v squared sine of 3 times square root of u squared plus v squared plus 3v e to the 2 uv minus v squared cosine of 3 square root of u squared plus v squared all divided by the square root of u squared plus v squared. Phew! That was a rough problem. Oh, guess what? We can generalize the chain rule. So if w is a function of m variables, it's differentiable. And let's just uh, suppose that each one of those variables is, dif uh, is a differentiable function of n variables t sub 1 through t sub n, then the partial derivative of w with respect to any of those t sub i's, um, let's be consistent with the book, let's call it t sub j, is going to be uh, dw dx1 times the partial of x1 with respect to t sub j plus partial of w with respect to x2 times partial of x2 with respect to t sub j. And we keep doing this until we run out of variables. Uh, dx of m dt sub j. And that's for any and all j equals one through n. And so, you know, life wouldn't be complete if we didn't do some exa an example. Uh, we're just gonna do one because they're, they're kind of painful as you can see. Um, so let's find dw du and dw dv. Here we go. Uh, let's go. D, the partial of W with respect to X, that's just Y. And if we plug in, um, Y is U cosine V. So let's just get everything plugged in. Um, we need the partial of W with respect to Y. That is going to be X, which is U squared E to the V. All right, um, we also are going to need the partial of W with respect to Z. So that's gonna be two Z, which is two U sine V. All right, now what do we need? We need dw, the partial, no, we don't need that, we just did that. We need the partial of x with respect to u, which is just gonna be two u e to the v. We need the partial of y with respect to u, which is just gonna be cosine of v. And we need the partial of z with respect to u, which is just sine of v. All right, so we obtain, Last but not least, we get dw du, that's gonna be the partial of x, which is u cosine of v, times the partial of x with respect to u, so two u e to the v, so we have the partial of w with respect to x times partial of x with respect to u, plus partial of w with respect to y times the partial of y with respect to u, plus the partial of w with respect to z, times the partial of z with respect to u. So I guess we could write that a little bit nicer as 3u squared e to the v cosine of v plus 2u sine squared v. And that is dw du. All right. We've already got the uh, dw dx, dw dy, dw dz. So now all we need is um, the dx dv, which is going to give me u squared e to the v. We need dy dv, wait, did I do that right? Yeah, dy dv is gonna give me negative u sine of v and the partial of z with respect to v 
is going to be u times cosine of v. All right, so um, let's, let's do it, we're done. Uh, well, we're done doing all the middle work. So partial of W with respect to V is going to be the partial of W with respect to X times partial of X with respect to V plus partial of W with respect to Y, which was U squared E to the V times partial of Y with respect to V plus the partial of W with respect to Z times partial of z with, with respect to v. Uh, so that gives me u cubed e to the v cosine v minus u cubed times e to the v times sine of v plus two u squared sine of v times cosine of v, which you could write a sine of two v, but I think this is not enough. The textbook um, talks about using a tree diagram for these calculations, which you might find helpful. All right. We also have, just like with, um, just like in Calc 1, we have implicit differentiation. And in this case, right, we actually just, you know, treat the other variable as actually a variable kind of. All right, let's just do the an example. I think this is easiest to see with an example. All right, so um, let's just find dz dy and dz dz for this. Um, I guess this technically isn't any, a function, it's an equation. So, you know, we, I should really have said equation. So you may recall that uh, we did this in Calc 1. You might not have liked it, but we did it. Okay, here we go. Let's do dz, dz, dz dx first, just because we can. And, and then the other one's going to be sort of the same idea. All right, so take the partial derivative of the equation with respect to x. So we're going to take d dx, that's d dx. of the equation. All right, so the so we're going to have to do this very carefully. Okay, the derivative x cubed z squared. Now, um, we're going to have to use the product rule on everything that we do that has, has um, a z in it and an x in it. Okay, so here we go. So the first term I'm going to get uh, d dx of x cubed times z plus x cubed times dz dx minus Funsville uh, d dx of five x y to the fifth times z. My, well, I'm just going to carry the minus through some. All right, I'll just put a plus. Uh, 5xy to the fifth times dz dx, and that equals 2x. All right, so I get 3x squared z plus x cubed dz dx minus 5y to the fifth z, carry, distribute the minus, minus 5xy to the fifth dz dx is equal to 2x. Okay, we want to solve for dz dx. So I'm going to get everything that's not that on the, and do some distribute uh, some factoring. So I get x cubed minus 5x y to the fifth dz dx is equal to 2x minus 3x squared z plus 5y to the fifth z. And I get that dz dx is 2x minus 3x squared z plus 5y to the fifth z divided by, uh, I feel like I dropped something. Did I lose something? Mm, oh, that was a z squared, sugar foot. So I have two 
x cubed z times dz dx. My bad. Problem solved. So I've got a 2x cubed z minus 5xy to the fifth. All right, let's do dz dy. All right, so now I'm going to take the partial with respect to y of the entire equation. And I apologize for the length of this video. That's my second time I've done that. All right, so here we go. We're going to have um, uh, d dy of x cubed z squared minus d dy of 5xy to the fifth z equals d dy of x squared plus y cubed. So the first one's just going to give me 2x cubed z dz dy. Um, this one's going to give me, well, I'm going to have d dy of 5xy to the fifth times z plus 5xy to the fifth times dz dx, and that equals 3y squared. So I have 2x cubed z, z dz dy minus 25xy to the fourth z minus 5x y to the fifth, I probably should put dz dy there because I'm taking the derivative with respect to y. 5x y to the fifth dz dy is equal to 3y squared. Algebra, please, anyone. So I get 2x cubed z minus 5x y to the fifth, and I'm going to add 25 x, y to the fourth z to both sides. And so finally, I get that the partial of z with respect to y is uh, this guy divided by uh, 2x cubed z minus 5x y to the fifth. I got suggested exercises for you. And next time we're going to talk about tangent planes. Okay, have a great day.